We installed our solar panels a year ago. This summer we passed one megawatt of generation and this is how we did it and what's next. Some longtime viewers might remember our old radar arch, which was like somewhere exactly here, what casted shadows on our panels. Once we removed it, our solar output nearly doubled, which is crazy how even small shadow can reduce efficiency dramatically. At that time we were still facing storage limitations. Our temporary battery was only about 2 kilowatt hour, so we couldn't store much of the energy we generated. By the end of the last year we upgraded to a temporary battery 2.0, a Nissan Leaf battery. Uh, don't forget to check that video. Originally 24 kilowatt hour when it was a brand new but due to degradation I estimate it was maybe like 15-17 kilowatt hours usable which is still pretty decent. Um, that's what made this summer possible. Not just generating the energy but also being able to store and use it. More importantly, we didn't use our generator at all this summer. Well, almost. There were few heavy overcast days where we just couldn't generate enough, let's say. Uh, but overall, we were fully solar powered and pretty much still we are. Uh, it couldn't be great to have even larger storage bank, but that's something for the next battery version, because how you get it, it's not the last one. So for anyone new to the channel, just a heads up, everything you see is a work in progress. There is no system on our boat what it's in its final form. Pretty much, we are always upgrading based on priority, and our metric is not what it's, oh, that would be nice to improve, but Rather, that's currently the most annoying thing on our boat, so let's call it the annoying list. That's why we tackled things in this order, so we, as soon as we get the boat, we installed our first battery, then inverter, then the first gen solar panels, then the external generator, second gen panel setup, another generator, another solar setup, and then another generator. So there was like a lot of iterations and a lot of versions. We have videos about pretty much all of these setups on our channel so don't forget to check it out uh, so once oh my god i hope you can hear me the wind is so strong <laughs> once our power needs stabilized we move to a hybrid power transfer which we are doing actually right now which will let us actually generate even more energy and the more importantly use stored energy for propulsion if our current storage is about 17 kilowatt hour and we generated over one megawatt hour this summer that means we use the toll. One of our key goals is to live comfortably, being able to use whatever we want on board at any time, just like in house or in apartment. But to also power the previous drivetrain, we need even more storage energy. Right now, our idle power draw is roughly 250-350 watts. That includes inverter idle, which is roughly about 70 watts, fridge cycling, let's call it about 100 watts in general, a 12 volt charger which works 24 7 without any stops so it's roughly about 60 watts in the summer up to 200 watts in the winter uh, because our like 12 volt system like on always time let's say lights some decoration lights chargers which also work from 12 volts so 12 volts requires charging all the time and um, also we have other chargers like electric unicycles dinghy equipment which sometimes push idle draw to over 500 watts at night, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Then add in power hungry devices like the water heater. Now after we added our diesel water heater system, <laughs> check the video about water diesel heater system. <laughs> Uh, it's also supported by the system, so it's not related only by electricity, so it's a little bit easier, but still, we have like induction cooktop, air fryer, microwave, PC, laptop, 3D printer, etc. There is a lot of things we power. And we're not stopping here, we have planned to add two more fridges, a washer dryer, a uh, water maker and maybe something else which we're not even think about it right now so we will need even more power we already have a second inverter ready so it's already on our boat but it's not installed yet because we need to oh my god the window <laughs> because we need to complete the engine swap and we arrange some components in the engine room first remember the annoying list so it's it's, it's still on the fact so yeah living with only one inverter is not the top priority yet but 
it will be once more urgent things are handled. So, of course, the inverter on the handles our household needs. We also need to upgrade our storage. That's why we are planning to remove the built-in generator. Yes, I know part two of the generator saga isn't even edited yet. Spoiler, the generator is runs now and it charged our battery. But we will either sell it or donate it once we will haul out and complete our previous drivetrain swap. Why? Because the previous system will become our main built-in generator. More fuel efficient, quieter and capable of cycling automatically, which is perfect for us. There is no sense for us to keep the old generator inside. And in the spot where our current generator is, we are planning to install four 15 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphide waterproof batteries. We are currently looking at EG4 units. Unfortunately, it's not sponsored. So, but we are open for other options. <laughs> I measured everything and these four batteries would fit perfectly in the center of our hull, acting as a ballast and uh, lowering the center of the mass, which is, again, it's perfect uh, improvement. That would give us roughly 60 kilowatt hours of storage for household use with 6 kilowatt output from two inverters sounds great but we are still only generated 12 to 14 kilowatt hour per day with our current solar panels which are mounted how you can see completely flat we plan to install four more panels two on each side forming fold out wings now before anyone rushed to the comments saying like why not just to build a roof you're not wrong okay but not for this boat i actually designed all these panel setups years ago when we first got the boat i didn't share it earlier because it felt too far off to be real so here's the problem with the roof the current flybridge roof is supported by thin aluminium frames on three sides pretty much the fiberglass pillars which holding this part of the roof and which i'm sitting on right now aren't structurally tied in at all which i discovered during last year renovations and the rear support is just a small teak frame over the back window adding a massive superstructure on top of that would risk losing the entire roof in the rough seas as it stands the roof is already as its weight limit pretty much as it is right now so putting extra weight towards the existing higher point of the flybridge is the best decision for us plus to avoid damage while docking or in bad weather each panel will have its own electric actuator letting it fall down to reduce sail effect and bring the center of the gravity closer to where it is now so let's say i double our solar capacity and connect the new panels to the second inverter and prevent voltage drops from partial shedding from this bimini top etc we are talking about 20 maybe even 25 kilowatt hour per day at that range i could top up the 60 kilowatt hour battery bank in about a wink even a wink what, what the fuck is a wink don't forget about household loads and everything so we can actually use this finally extra power for our previous drivetrain and that's the moment when everything fits together so if you don't want to miss the next stage of our hybrid boats transformation make sure to subscribe to our channel check our membership where you can support us and get access to the private discord server where we share the project updates all cut files technical details and chat with you directly if i was able to reach 350 kilowatt hours in july this year limited only by storage because we quite often get topped out to the maximum 100 percent of our battery capacity could i reach 100 kilowatt hour next time with a new system when we will install a bigger battery and uh, our folding wings solar panels let me know in the comments what you think about it so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video bye